We have uh, Jack and Susan Davis from Bozeman, Montana, and they're recognized collectors and authorities on all things Yellowstone National Park. And there is a Yellowstone connection here today, too, and Susan Davis is going to be talking about that. To the Today, the Davises will be talking about the incredible American Art Nouveau Samuel L. Schmucker, postcard artist and just wonderful, uh, uh, incredible man. And their talk will be on his, the discovery of his lost art. I wanted to just say just a few words. Keep in mind that these original art paintings that they discovered were, can I start to say commissioned, they were completed in 1905 and in 1906, and they were made for the Detroit Publishing Company. And uh, they're going to tell about all of this and the uh, postcards that resulted from some of those uh, paintings were published in 1907. And then several years went by, and from 1909 to 1915, or about that time, Schmucker was submitting artwork for postcards to be printed by the John Winch Publishing. They're known for their high quality printing and uh, just, just amazing, favorite, wonderful postcards for holidays and so forth. With these notes in mind, please join me in welcoming Susan and Jack Davis for today's program. Okay, well, thank you. And Susan and I want to thank Hal and Alan for their help. Uh, they've walked us through this process and I don't think they get enough credit for the work they do. Uh, it's almost like a television program and uh, they really do a great job and, and we wanna thank them for their help. Otherwise, I'm sure that we wouldn't be doing this, but because of their expertise uh, and guidance, we're, we're looking forward to sharing this information with you. Uh, this is the front and back cover of the book that we wrote in 2001. Uh, the left, the front cover is an unpublished painting by Schmucker. The title is Snipe. It's from the Waterbird set. Uh, it's an image that was not known to exist until we found the collection of paintings. The back cover on the right, uh, the title is Winter from a, a Woman's Seasons set. Uh, and you can see the Art Nouveau style of the painting. We could not have written this book without the help of Dorothy Ryan. Uh, Dorothy interviewed members of Schmucker's family. Uh, she wrote the biographical profile and the art chapters in our book. And if it wasn't for Dorothy, uh, I'm sure that we would not have been able to, to write the book. Uh, so she deserves a lot of credit and we were very lucky to have her help us do this. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about our discovery of the paintings and the postcards that Detroit Publishing published from those paintings. We're gonna discuss the Yellowstone connection and the fact that if we did not collect Yellowstone, we probably would never have found the paintings. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the different paintings that Schmucker submitted to Detroit Publishing. Uh, these include 52 paintings which were published as postcards and 43 paintings which are new unknown images that were never published. Uh, for those of you out there that uh, are uh, looking to find something, there's seven known published paintings that have not been found. This is the name of our uh, presentation, Samuel Lawrence Schmucker, The Discovery of His Lost Art. Uh, Samuel Schmucker was born in 1879 in Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh, he died in, at the age of 42 in 1921 of a heart attack. 
on Long Island, New York. He is recognized by many people in the postcard hobby as being the finest American postcard artist from the golden age, but he's never received recognition outside of the postcard hobby. These two photos we have were courtesy of Dorothy. She got them from relatives. Um, the one on the left shows Smucker circa 1883 at age four, and he contracted polio in his right arm and hand, and he gripped his paintbrush in a claw-like manner, which meant all movement he had in his arm, um, his hand came from his arm. And the photo on the right shows him at 1906 at age 27, and that is the same time during when he was producing paintings for the Detroit Publishing Company. He's holding the magazine, Everybody's Magazine, and we looked but could never find a copy of that to see what it was about. Um, then this one shows Smucker in the middle in the back with his hand resting on one of his relatives, we think, and it shows that it is kind of a, in a constricted manner and how he had to paint with that hand. The photo on the right is Schmucker circa 1909, age 30. And this is when he started working for John Wench. The photograph on the right shows Catherine Rice, who was the Schmucker girl. She was, we think that they were married. We're not sure because Dorothy Ryan could never find a marriage certificate, but she's pretty sure that they were married. Uh, we don't know. We know that she was younger than Samuel. We don't know how, how much younger, but between five and 10 years younger than him. She died in San Francisco in 1955. She was also an artist. And I think they met at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. This is education teachers and classmates of Schmucker. He attended high school in the Reading Pennsylvania High School. He went to Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. Uh, his, his teachers, his professors were Thomas Anschultz and Howard Pyle. Uh, then he followed Howard Pyle to Drexel in 1898, 1899. Howard Pyle was considered the most influential American art teacher of his time. And <clears throat> Smucker's classmates included Jesse Wilcox Smith, who was a very good friend of his. She was 13 years older than Smucker, Maxwell Parrish, N.C. Wyeth, Frank Schoonover, and Stanley Authors. And these artists have received widespread recognition. Schmucker never was uh, enjoyed that kind of recognition. Some of the influences of his work, uh, and you can see that he was influenced by a lot of different artists and different art movements. Uh, perhaps maybe the, the most influential was a pre-Raphaelite painter, a brotherhood of painters, uh, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, uh, the Brandywine School, which was from Pennsylvania and Delaware. Uh, the Art Nouveau artist, which we recognize, Rafael Kirshner, Louis Comfort Tiffany, Alphonse Mucha, Gustav Klimt, Henry Meunier. He also had an arts and crafts influence. And then American artists, uh, which we have found that influenced his artwork included such people as Winslow Homer, uh, John J. Audubon, Catherine von Holden, who was a fashion designer for a Philadelphia newspaper, and Charles Dana Gibson, among other people. This is a general timeline that I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on. We're gonna come back to this at the end of the talk. <clears throat> Basically, it just gives a chronological timeline of Detroit Publishing Company, the fact that he submitted the photo, the, the paintings in 0506. Uh, the Troy Publishing Company declared bankruptcy in 1932. That was the year that Jack Haynes purchased the bankruptcy inventory 
and shipped it to Montana uh, to sell parts of that in Yellowstone Park. Uh, Jack's wife, Isabel, passed away in 1993. We were contacted after that, after the estate sale, uh, to buy 77 paintings, which we recognize as Schmucker paintings. Uh, we were able to acquire 11 more paintings from that collection from a from a de, uh, Dennis Gorham in Salt Lake City, uh, which was very fortuitous. We wrote and published the book, and then we exhibited the paintings. Uh, we called our discovery of the Smucker postcard art the Yellowstone Connection. If we hadn't collected Yellowstone memorabilia, we may never had acquired the paintings. In 1996, we commissioned Rick Geary to do a postcard for our Yellowstone connection to show how we acquired them. It said 77 golden orbs discovered in Montana. The top of the triangle included Detroit Publishing, who published the cards in 1907. Then in the right corner is when Jack Haynes purchased the Detroit Publishing bankruptcy auction stock and brought it to Montana to sell in his in his shops in the park. The final corner is for uh, Jack and I when we purchased the paintings in 1996 in Bozeman, where we live. This completes our triangle of the Yellowstone connection. We have a saying on the postcard of gather ye postcards while ye may. This is a poetic, poetic stanza by Herrick from one of the Smucker's published postcards in the motto set, which actually said gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Um, we'll be showing them, you that set a little later. The paintings came to Bozeman, Montana, our hometown, with the Detroit Publishing Company bankruptcy stock. Jack Haynes was a concessionaire and photographer in Yellowstone Park. He, brought, he bought the entire stock from their bankruptcy auction in 1932 and shipped it to Bozeman to sell in his stores in Yellowstone Park. The paintings had a black triangular gummy sticker on the backboard with a metal loop for hanging. This hanger was also on many of the Yellowstone photos that Haynes was selling in the park. We knew because we collected a lot of them. <laughs> this indicated to us that at one point, some of these paintings were for sale in Yellowstone and may explain how some of the paintings were separated from the entire group and also the ones that remain missing. We had a call from a person to come look at some pictures of women. They didn't know that they were actual artwork or anything about them. When we entered the room, they were stacked on a table across the room. From the doorway, I could tell I was looking at original artwork. I have a degree in art and I got goosebumps looking at the stacks of, of art pieces. There were several stacks that were uneven because the paintings were mounted on backboards. They had almost put them in a garage sale. We made them an offer and the rest is history. That was 28 years ago. In 2003, 2003, we exhibited the collection at the University of Delaware. And I should back up here just a second. We, we acquired 11 paintings from Dennis Gorham that he had bought in an antique show in Salt Lake City. Uh, this made a total of 88 paintings. We realized that many of these paintings had not been published before. We decided to do a book about the paintings in our discovery. Uh, we have a soft cover and hard cover book with a dust jacket. The book took two years to write, 1999 to 2000, with the help of Dorothy Ryan. Uh, we could not have done the work without her help. Collaboration between Dorothy, Susan, and myself. We contacted the University of Delaware because uh, Catherine Rice was from Newark, Delaware, and Schmucker had studied at the Howard Pyle Institute, which oftentimes, the Brandywine School, which did work in Delaware. And we had an exhibit there uh, which was very successful, and the people really enjoyed the, the the paintings. This is a postcard that they published advertising that exhibit. In 2005, 
uh, we contacted the Reading Public Museum and we exhibited the paintings there. Uh, ironically, Schmucker was born in Reading, but they really didn't know much about him, uh, which is pretty amazing. And they actually found a collection of drawings and paintings that he had done in high school in their archives. So it was very uh, interesting and exciting to go there and, and, dis and exhibit the paintings and see their collection of artwork that they had found that he had done when, when he was young. One of the things that we realized after writing the book was that he probably was influenced by Gustav Klimt in his use of gold. He uses a lot of heavy gold ink in his paintings. And prior to the, seeing that collection, we had not made that connection. So Smucker submitted a minimum. He may have submitted more than 95 paintings to the Detroit Publishing Company. The paintings were created 0506. The copyright is 07. The medium is gouache, which is a opaque, opaque watercolor. Watercolor, ink, and gold paint. We found 14 sets. Eight were published sets and six were unpublished sets. There were 45, 45 published paintings, 43 unpublished paintings, and seven known published paintings which remain missing. So now we're going to start and show you the paintings. Uh, this is the beginning of the published paintings, the published sets that Detroit <coughs> issued. And if you look at the image in the middle, you can see that it's a poetic stanza by Dante Gabriel Rossetti, which the Pre-Raphaelite influence was very strong uh, in his work. And one of the uh, techniques of the Pre-Raphaelites was to combine artwork with literature. And this set shows that with Shakespeare, Rossetti, Byron, these are three more images in that set, Herrick, Coleridge, and Thomas More. Another aspect of Pre-Raphaelite artwork is a repetition of design, which you can see in the woman's dress on the left and in the, wo the woman in the middle. So there's a very strong Pre-Raphaelite influence in his work, and especially in this set. This is an example of a painting he did, and the style carries over to a John Wench Thanksgiving postcard published 1910. Uh, you can see that the woman looks similar and that there's a gold arb behind her head. Uh, and gold arbs are, were very uh, common use of, of pre-Raphaelite painters and something that Schmucker uh, used a lot in his, in his images. The second set is the Butterfly Women. It's a metamorphic set. There's a couple of influences in this set. One is uh, Louis Comfort Tiffany and his stained glass patterns of the woman on the right. And you can see that she also has a golden orb behind her. Three other images in that set, another golden orb to the woman on the right. A little bit of the influence of Charles Rennie Mackintosh, a Scottish arts and crafts artist, uh, which showed up in the high school pieces that we looked at in Reading. These are two unpublished images from that butterfly set. And the one on the left, we feel, is was a little more garish colors than the other. And it is signed down in the lower right there, where some of them weren't signed. And the image on the right, we feel that that wasn't, un, wasn't published because of her exposed breast. It does still have the orb and the Tiffany-styled wings, though. But they remained unpublished. But they were with the, the paintings we found. This is the Mermaid's Lovers, uh, and once this is Women in Nature. Uh, he was very realistic in his paintings of animals and fish and birds. insects and birds. birds. Uh, also, these women have hair pieces in their hair, 
that was indicative of the pre-Raphaelite painters. The image on the right is an image that's missing. This painting did not show up in the collection. It's the first one that you can see that he signed it by stacking his, his signature SLS. And then in the bottom right hand corner, copyright 1907 by Detroit Publishing Company. So we suspect and we, we hope that this paintings exist and that it's out there somewhere. Uh, but we, it was not in the collection that we bought. This is the Drinker's Set, was the name of it. And it shows women with popular drinks and drink glasses. The Manhattan one on the right has the word cocktail printed in pencil on the back of it. But when Detroit published it, they called it the Manhattan, gave it that name. And the painting, the Claret, had the word Rhine wine printed on the back. But once again, Detroit put the word Claret on the front. So we feel Smucker had written those names on the back of those paintings. And you can also see um, kind of ghost images of pencil, his pencil drawings at the bottom of the stems of the glasses that were not removed. And they, were, they show up in the postcards also. But these were all signed. Oh, the drinkers uh, may have been associated with the smoker's dream set, and we're going to show you that next. And Smucker also uses a lot of the white gouache in this set, which once again is opaque watercolor, and he uses it on the, the glass stems and the dresses for accent. This is the smoker's dream set, uh, and it's a sensual set. It may have been influenced by Rafael Kirshner's set, The Smokers, which pre preceded this date. These are two images of postcards that the paintings were not found. They, they remain missing. It's possible that this set could have been a regional or national set. The girl on the left has a shamrock in her hair and uh, is probably Irish. These are two more Detroit publishing postcards, uh, which the paintings have not been found, a Native American with a peace pipe, and then a Southern woman with a corncob pipe. And once again, you can see in the bottom right, Detroit, copyright 1907, Detroit Publishing Company. This was a painting that we found that was not published. Uh, it looks like it possibly could be English, we're not sure. And if you look in the side on the edge of the smoke, he signed it SLS. And then on the right is a detail of that part of the painting. He would try to hide his paintings sometimes. Uh, not all of his paintings are signed, but some of them, uh, he, he kind of hides where he signs it so it's hard to find. This is called The Adventures of a Gnome. That's also uh, titled All's Well That Ends Well. And if you look at his depiction of the insects and the frog, they're very realistic. Uh, the, the, the center painting has a Japanese influence with a flat, kind of a flat surface and an Art Nouveau influence. Uh, the image on the left, you can see is very fine detail in the hummingbird. And on the right, once again, uh, he has a golden orb behind the image of the gnome and the owl. Now this image was not published. It was a new painting that they chose not to publish, uh, maybe because they th didn't think it would be popular. And one, one thing that we learned by this collection is that Schmucker submitted artwork to Detroit Publishing, and they chose what they published and what they didn't publish. So it was it was a decision on their part of what they what they did going forward. Now the person who was in charge of making those decisions at this time was William Henry Jackson. Uh, he was a pioneer, a famous pioneer photographer. He was with the Hayden survey that discovered that 
explored Yellowstone in 1871, 1872. His photographs were influenced Congress to establish Yellowstone as a national park. Ironically, he was hired by Detroit Publishing and his, they bought his photographic slides uh, and he was put in charge of production. So it, it's really, uh, the Yellowstone connection is even more than just with Jack Haynes acquiring the bankruptcy stock. It was also with William Henry Jackson. It's a pretty fascinating story. And uh, we, we suspect that he cho did not choose this image because it might have frightened some people. The Childhood Days set is a very pretty set. The two images on the outside, the paintings have not been found. You can see the golden arb behind the woman and the child. Uh, Detroit Publishing did something that, I, that was very interesting in this set. In the Mato set, Smucker incorporated poetic stanzas with the, the artwork. And in this set, Detroit Publishing chose to add poetic stanzas to the postcards that are not on the original artwork. Uh, it's kind of interesting. The, the motto set, the poet, the point, the, the poets are English romantic poets, and in this set, they're American poets. Uh, there's Longfellow. Uh, also, you'll see the golden orb behind the woman on the left. There was Longfellow. There was Robert Louis Stevenson, uh, Elizabeth Barrett Browning. The painting on the left was directly influenced by a painting that was done by Jesse Wilcox Smith in 1903 called Among the Poppies. It was republished as a postcard in, in, in 19, I think, nine. Smucker's painting is 1907, but it's a direct reflection of Jesse Wilcox Smith and her work. Uh, we know that they were good friends, that they uh, studied together at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts and under Howard Pyle. Uh, so this is, this is probably the most obvious influence uh, of one of his classmates upon his work. The last published set that we will show <clears throat> is the International Women. These are women that are dressed in native uh, costumes of their country. And behind them, there's coats of arms uh, and indigenous vegetation or flowers. The woman on the left was Switzerland. This is interesting because Schmucker is of Swiss descent, but this is the only Swiss image that he ever painted. Uh, there's a subset within this set of dancers that show up later in another set he did. Uh, and the woman from Italy and the woman from France are both dancers. Uh, the, the woman on the right from Spain is also a dancer. Russia was a new country that had just been established at that time, but he included Russia in this set of paintings. Uh, the girl from the woman from Turkey has poppies behind her. And if you look on the fringe of her uh, shawl, you'll see the actually it's a roll, it's called the rolling log. It was a um, a quilt pattern that predated the Nazi use of this. It was actually a, a, a good luck uh, image. It was, it's in the quilting hobby. Um, and it shows up in Native American images. And then the 10th image that he chose for in this, the Detroit Publishing published was the image on the left is it looks like a, an, an English nanny, perhaps. The two formal English images, he did, they did not publish. We don't know the reason why. Uh, the one in the middle looks a lot like Princess Diana. Well, it's just coincidence. Uh, perhaps they didn't want to appeal to uh, a more formal image in this set. Now we start on images on sets that were not published. These are new images. These were not known to exist before we made our discovery. And this is called Little Miss Nations. And the reason that we call this set 
is the image on the left on the back of the painting was written Little Miss America. On the middle, it was Indian Maiden. And on the right, Piccaninny. And so we suspect that if he, if they had published this set, that they probably would have used the Little Miss America image. The skyline in the background is Philadelphia, where he lived and worked. All of these paintings are signed, and you can see SLS on, under these. The, the Native American maiden, there's teepees in the background. And the young African American girl, there's women that are working in the fields picking cotton. And then he goes on to show other countries uh, with vignettes in the background, and these are also signed here at the bottom. The one image that he didn't sign in this uh, set was Little Miss Japan. We could not find a signature behind her. The, the second unpublished set, and this set is very hard to uh, figure out. <laughs> figure out. It's, it's very symbolic. Uh, once again, there's a dance subset to this. The girl, the woman on the right is has a butterfly dress with a cocoon mask behind her. Uh, we think this might be a Santa mask, uh, and possibly this set was a national set. We don't know. You can see very lightly written SLS uh, underneath these masks. There's the uh, Native American girl has a mask behind her, but it's not signed. This is a Japanese image with a Noah mask and a French can-can girl. Uh, so it's, it, it's an interesting set. The mask symbolism is carried over into his work that he did for John Winch, 1913. This is a set of six Halloween mask set. It's a, it's a hard set, it's a rare set to find. Uh, we weren't sure if this was Schmucker, we thought it was. We contacted Susan Nicholson and she said, yes, it was Schmucker. Uh, so we were glad that she was able to confirm this. But the mass motif carries over into this set, which he did later. This is a childhood season set, spring, summer, autumn, and fall. In the spring set, you can see a new moon, a crescent moon. In the summer, there's a golden orb moon behind the young boy. Behind the girl, there's nymph, nymphs or fairies. Uh, and behind the boy, there's mermaids and fish. And when we, when we found the set of paintings, these were the only two images in that set. And we knew that autumn and winter were missing. And we said, well, we will never know what they were, we'll never, we'll always wonder how this set was completed because it's such a pretty set and, and it'll haunt us for the rest of our life. And then Dennis Gorham called us that next year and said he had found a set of 11 paintings in Salt Lake City. And immediately I asked him on the phone, did he have autumn and winter? And he said, yes, he did. And those are the two images that he found in Salt Lake City. Uh, so we were able to complete the set. The image on the left is what we consider to be Schmucker's first Halloween image. Uh, there's little gnomes in the background with pumpkins. These are also signed SLS. Uh, the young boy to the right has a Santa face in the background and a, a golden orb of a moon behind. So fortunately, we were very <laughs> happy to be able to, to complete this set. This is called the Women's Season Set. It's a set of four, and it uh, repeats the women's, the theme of the balance in nature, nature with women and floral images. The images are similar in style to Alphonse Mucha's menu cards. The early designs definitely have an Art Nouveau influence. Um, this is spring and summer. 
and the set is different. If you can notice in the background, the backgrounds are tinted with a real light color. One's uh, violet and green, and uh, none of the other sets had that tinting. It was kind of uh, uh, futuristic, I guess. <laughs> And uh, they were either allowing an image to be put in the, the space there for a menu or a space for writing a message. So they were early cards that had or early paintings that had been for early cards. This set is our next to last unpublished set. These images were not known uh, to exist. This has an Audubon influence. It's a very beautiful set. Uh, Schmucker paid attention to detail and the birds. The woman on the right, her her head is in, is in an orb, a golden orb. Here. These are signed in a different style where he stacks his signature. Uh, it's a very pretty set. These are three more full-size images in this set of six. There were two images that showed up that were studies that were smaller. They weren't, they weren't as, as large. They were, the, the others were like six by nine inches. These were about three by five. The one on the right is signed at the bottom, but these were mock-ups or studies and they were the only two like this in the, in the, in the group of paintings. Schmucker attended the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts and in 1893, the Academy acquired Winslow Homer's painting, The Fox Hunt. This painting hung in the, in the hallway of the school. So we're, we know for a fact that Schmucker saw the painting, that he was aware of the painting. And we think that it may have influenced uh, the painting of the raven in the land bird set. It's a very beautiful image with a juxtaposition of the black bird and the woman's face. And this is the last set. It's also unpublished. We call it the water bird set. It has a strong Art Nouveau influence, uh, also a Japanese influence. We used the image on the left, the snipe, as the cover of our book. Uh, University of Delaware used the snipe image uh, to, the I'm sorry, the Fisher image to publish their exhibit. We think that the image on the right, the swan painting, may have been influenced by Rafael Kirshner, Lita and the Swan, 1902. We, we see other, other uh, influences of Kirshner and some of Smucker's paintings. This is a photograph of Samuel Smucker in 1942, right before he passed away at the age of 42, and, I'm sorry, 1921. He was visiting his brother in Long Island. His brother lived in this shack. It was called the shack. Uh, that's where Schmucker was when he passed away, when he died of a heart attack. Uh, he never realized widespread recognition, only within the postcard hobby. And even in the postcard hobby, he's not well known. So we're hoping that maybe uh, he will be recognized as an American, important American artist at some time. I'll go back through this with you just to give you a general summation of what we've talked about. William Henry Jackson was hired by Detroit Publishing, was put in charge of assignments. 95 Schmucker paintings were submitted to Detroit Publishing. They published 52 postcards in eight sets. They declared bankruptcy in 1932. Jack Haynes from Yellowstone Park bought their inventory. He shipped it to Montana. His wife sold their business in Yellowstone Park and retired. When she passed away in her estate auction, we were contacted to buy 77 paintings. Dennis Gorham found 11 more in Salt Lake City the next year. Uh, we wrote and self-published the book on Samuel Smucker with Dorothy Ryan. We exhibited the paintings in Delaware and in the Reading Public Museum. And that's it.
Well, I wanted to say we enjoyed sharing our Smucker discovery with everyone. We want to thank you and Hal and Alan for all your hard work and thank all of you for attending our pre uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you both so much. Remember the first of the presentation, the Davises showed us the front and back dust jacket covers of their book that they wrote on Samuel Schmucker with uh, Dorothy Ryan. They have a few softback and hardback copies left. And if you are interested in purchasing a copy, please go to the uh, chat window here for their uh, uh, website and you may correspond or contact them and see about uh, buying one of the books. I'm sure they would sign it too. Bill Burton, can we uh, please look to you for any uh, questions we might have today or comments made during the time? Well, Robert Bell wanted to know if any of these cards were sent to Canada in the uh, collection that you have. No. We haven't found any card. The cards we think were sold in cities because they were expensive. They were two and a half cents as opposed to one cent. So we're pretty sure that they were sold in cities, not in rural areas. Uh, I haven't seen any of the cards sent to Canada. It's possible that they were, but I, I'm not aware of any. Well, that takes care of that. That's um, an interesting question. Yeah, it is. Uh, would you be interested in having an exhibit of the paintings in New England. This we is coming from Kathy Alpert. We don't own them anymore. Uh, we've sold them to different collectors. And uh, we, tried to keep we tried to keep them together. We made it, we, we, we did everything we could to keep the collection together. To a museum. Uh, we tried to get it to go to museums and we were not successful. So we unfortunately had to sell the collection. Piece by piece. Yes. Where... Can I comment at this point? Uh, Go ahead, Susan. Related. Um, I was at the exhibit, I believe, in Delaware, and so were the Schmucker relatives that knew uh, that lived in that region. And I remember one young woman coming over to me and saying that they had pieces of his artwork, but it looked nothing like these postcards. I didn't get back to them to see what they had, but I'd be very curious to know what uh, he produced for his family. Yeah, there are other paintings that he did that have shown up that have been discovered, uh, but none of them were for postcards. And a lot of his early work did look a lot different than than these paintings did that was found in the museum archives. And uh, I remember those people too. <laughs> And in the in the uh, set of um, international women, you had the Russian one. Is that a published card? Yes. Okay, that's the card I'm missing from that set. I just recently bought the the USA one, which was long sought after and difficult to find. But the Russian card would be the one that I'm looking for next. Okay, if you have doubles, but more than that, you published your own set of reproduction of the cards. Did you publish everything that you had or just the ones that were previously published? Published. We published everything. You still have a set left? Yes. Talk to you. <laughs> are, are all the uh, images in the book then? Yes. Yes. Uh, do you ship to Canada? We don't even go there. <laughs> well, I know I'm giving you a hard time. We would be glad to ship to Canada. I don't know what the shipping costs would be, but yes, we do. Yeah, because I'm just looking at it. your three books are quite interesting on your site, but it doesn't mention the cards on the site. Uh, when I have well, to, I don't, I don't have them on there. Susan was the only one to figure that out, but we have. I think we have about five sets of cards. Uh, if you contacted us, we could send you that information. What we did four years ago was we sold our home and downsized to a condo. And so everything got put in storage and, and we saved those, but we have to dig them out 
where we have them because we don't have as much room now that we're in a condo. When we published the postcards, we had the printer do an extra run of gold on top. So it makes them very special over, mm -hmm. you know, over and above a regular postcard. So it's a whole set? Yes, and they're all in envelopes. Each set is in an envelope also. Oh, nice. I actually have a question about the envelopes. Uh, I have all of the sets of the Schmucker original cards, but I only have a few of the envelopes. Did each set come with an envelope? Yes, they did, and they're hard to find. Yeah, I think we only had three or four envelopes with our cards that we had, and usually they're very beat up. <laughs> yeah. That's okay, are you able to see my... Uh... Yes, I see it. Yes, my page. Uh, I my understanding is that uh, this set, the childhood days, was found in large quantities uh, sometime about twenty years ago. Yes, and it was. They they appear a little, I think, more often than some of the other sets. Well, they appeared there was, together. There was a box of those that was found somewhere. And we were at the New York Postcard Show, and they had a bunch of them there 20 years ago. <laughs> so, yes, there were a bunch that showed up. But some of the sets are very hard to find. All right, Nancy Redden uh, writes, uh, I'd love to have a set of the uh, of the cards. How, how do I go about it? <laughs> oh, I, I popped my, um, my uh, email in there. Yes. So just tell me, I'll send you a check as soon as I can. <laughs> we got to get them out of the storage. <laughs> That's okay. I'm not, I'm never in a hurry anymore. So I, <laughs> I can web... send you the money and if I get them in March, I'll be happy. All right, Susan Lane, throw in a last minute comment. Susan says, Jack, great talk. As I didn't get your set when it came out, now is, is the time. Please save a set for me. <laughs> Special okay. pleading, Susan. Well, we feel really privileged to have been able to find this collection. And if it hadn't been for collecting Yellowstone, which people used to say to me, why are you collecting Yellowstone? And now I guess it paid off in the end that we were. <laughs> well, I should mention that uh, we had our private collection has gone to the park and it's in their archives. Uh, we had 20,000 items in our Yellowstone Park collection. And 10,000 of them were postcards, and the other 10,000 items were photos and saddles and books and just A to Z souvenirs. So it's being curated in the Historic Center in it, Gardner, Montana. As long as the federal government doesn't go out of business, we're good to go. <laughs> you also so, have to. So who bought the original paintings? Oh, they went to several different people. Um, about 10 different people acquired the paintings. Oh, okay. D did you keep one for yourself? No. No, we didn't. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I know, we, but they went with sets and stuff. It was hard to break yeah. sets up. Yeah. But Susan Lane, you're holding up something there. What have we yeah. got? These were the advertisements for the two um, shows. I believe the one in uh, Delaware and the yes. one in um, Reading. I, I'm just uh, hoping you can see how beautiful these pieces were. The and one. there's no reason that modern cards can't go in to my Schmucker collection. Oh, yeah, uh, they're advertising. That's them. right. That's right. And uh, let me see if I have anything else. Yeah. You know, the, the amazing thing to me was that Reading, the Reading Public Museum really didn't know that much about Schmucker. And he was born there. Yeah, they did. When they had the exhibit, they did have at least one of the images that he had painted that uh, was previously unknown, but it was sitting there in their archives. So lucky for us to have seen it. Yes. All right, Kathy Alpert says, a great meeting. Thanks for everything. Save a set on a book for me. <laughs> and can I ask a question too? Sure. I want to find out because I think that I'm probably the only person on this call who is strictly a collector and not really a dealer. I mean, huh. so I'm wondering about buying these cards, the original cards, how available and accessible are yeah. they? And what, what are the price points if they're still available? <laughs> the 
price points are pretty high. At we, least they used to be. Yeah, we, they still are. Back in the day, we, they were in the three to four hundred range, weren't they, Susan? Or five hundred. Yeah, they're not as high now. Uh, and un interestingly, the demand is not really there as it had been when your book came out. You really wow. did something for the hobby that you owe many accolades for. Um, brought uh, Samuel Smucker to our attention. He did a lot of work for Winch after the cards that you show, but these cards are just uh, extraordinary. And yes, they do bring in the uh, the Art Nouveau and the Japanese uh, image, imagery. Okay, anybody else have any comments they would like to make? Yeah, this is Diane. Um, I'll just tell Kathy that if she is starting her collection, um, I'm an only a collector too, I'm not a dealer, but I do have quite a few duplicates of my Schmucker cards so she can contact me if she okay. wants to purchase Great. any. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Diane. Your last name, Kevin. And Diane, you might be yes. interested in the um, the Yellowstone book as well. <coughs> should, should we oh, open the discussion up to the fact that we've gotten many gifts from the Davises? Diane, I heard there's a great postcard show in Phoenix in January. Is that true? Yes. And unfortunately, you know, it used to be run by Fred Tenney. And he sold it to Ralph and Ralph changed the dates when he purchased it. So now it's the MLK weekend, which is the weekend of my annual birding festival that I work at. Oh. And so I haven't been able to go for the last 10 years. So oh, I was thinking I, I might bug out on my bird thing and actually go to the show this year. Well, a friend of mine told me that it's a really good show. Yeah, it is. Friend of, friend of Susan Lane's told me that. Okay. Dan Frankel. <laughs> and Ross, did you want to say something? Yes, I um, had a question. I'm sorry I was late getting uh, here. Well, um, we're Richard, sorry we didn't see you to let you in earlier. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm working. Vintageimages.com, is that where we can order the book? I Vintage Images. I vintage images dot com. I vintage images. Thanks again for coming, and we hope to see you in the new year, twenty twenty four. Thank you, Bob. Good holiday season. Happy holiday. Wonderful. Thank Happy you. Holidays. Thank you, everyone. You bet. Thanks to our speakers, Jack and Susan, so very very much. You've been great. You're welcome. Thanks, Al. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye.